Yeah. Hi, all. Um, I'm Vineet, uh, and I work for Google in the Chrome OS team. So uh, this presentation was initially uh, planned to be done by me and Joel. Um, but unfortunately, Joel could not make it due to some personal emergencies. So uh, yeah, here I go. I'll be I'll be alone doing this. Um, so a little background. Um, so in Chrome OS, we have uh, Android running as a guest, uh, and we were seeing some latency issues with the Android apps. And on investigation, we saw that uh, the issue is basically a disconnected scheduling between the guest and the host. Um, so guest doesn't know where the host is actually scheduling it, and the host doesn't know what is running inside the guest. So if the guest is running something highly latency critical, the host doesn't know, and basically the host might schedule it or might might uh, defer it, and that can cause uh, latency issues. So the idea that we came up with is uh, something called like a parallel mode of scheduling where guest and host will uh, share information and uh, they can make educated decisions based on the information that they receive. So how this, uh, the initial design that we came up with was uh, uh, how they share the information is through a shared memory page. And the guest might say like, this is the priority of this uh, task that I'm going to run. And the host knows this and the host can uh, choose the priority based on what the guest is running. And so we have something called a scheduling protocol, which describes the memory layout of the shared page and the details of information that's being shared and the policy decisions that the host is uh, going to make based on the information. On the boot up of the guest, uh, they basically negotiate with the host regarding what protocol to use and then set up the memory page. And from then on, the host side will take uh, control uh, by talking to KVM. Um, like whenever an event happens, like a VM enter, VM exit, an interrupt injection, et cetera, um, the host can take actions to boost a uh, vCPU thread or, or something like that. So on the shared memory page, we have basically three areas, uh, a header, um, a guest area where the guest populates and the host reads, and a host area where the host um, populates and the guest reads. And the current design is where the guest allocates one uh, page or a one, one block of memory per uh, per vCPU and the host uh, reads that to understand in uh, details. So uh, the history is like on, we, we uh, submitted a V1 soon after LPC, um, where the implementation was very KVM specific. The whole uh, details was inside the KVM, like KVM was the arbitrator for handshake. KVM was the uh, place where you house the policies and KVM was the decision maker. And upstream didn't really like it because these are the inf these are the things that KVM should not be doing as a hypervisor. It should be somewhere outside. So we came up with a V2 uh, later on, like uh, a month back. And in the V2, what we did was the policy and the schedule conditions is outside of uh, of KVM, and that's where BPF comes into play. So it's either implemented as a uh, BPF uh, program or a K or a kernel module. And it hooks on to KVM using struct ops uh, so that the KVM can call back. And uh, whenever an event happens, like a VM enter or a VM exit, so whenever an event happens, the KVM can call back. But still, the handshake was within uh, inside the uh, KVM itself. And uh, we had a chat off list with uh, Sean, who is a KVM maintainer. And he didn't like the idea of even having the K handshake within inside the KVM. So a V3 is currently in the works where Handshake is outside of the KVM and, and in a VM I'm like QMU or cross VM. And only the uh, KVM is only now responsible for letting the uh, policy decision maker, which, which is a BPF program or a module, uh, when an event happens. So this is, this is the uh, V3 design that we have. At the VMM, we emulate a new device, a virtual device called PVSCAD. And that's the, that's the one which is responsible for doing handshake with the guest and, uh, and deciding what to do. So when the guest comes up, the device is probed and a PVSCAD driver gets loaded. And that talks to the device uh, where the handshake happens. And it will actually basically give all the information that it needs, like the shared memory page, et cetera. And the device process actually gets the information about the vCPU threads, the PID, the CPU ID, et cetera, from the uh, VMM itself. 
So once it has all the details, it basically loads a BPF program. That's the uh, decision maker and the policy. And the BPF program uh, can hook into KVM for getting the callbacks and it can call into the scheduler to make scheduling decisions. So this is this is the design that we uh, come, come up with for V3. So uh, this I have already explained. Um, so we, we have a share, uh, BPA program basically gets all the details from the VMM, which is a shared memory address, PIDs and CPU IDs. Then it registers uh, to the KVM uh, for events and it implements uh, the policies and calls to the scheduler as and when needed. Hi, Vinny. So what I would discuss, yeah, sorry. Uh, hi, uh, would you mind going back to the last slide just for a moment, please? Sure. So there's no BPF program running inside the guest then, it's just um, you have like a PV sked driver that communicates with KVM directly? Um, so that part we have not yet decided. So it could either be a guest uh, BPF program inside the guest or it could be a separate uh, PV sked driver. Yeah, but but the PV sked driver, if we have a BPF program, then yeah, we would need the PV sked driver to somehow contact with the BPF program as well. But that's right. not, yeah, we have not decided on that side yet. So, so the, would you still have to add UAPI for the PV sked driver then to be able to set up that communication channel? The PV sked driver can talk to the scheduler directly to get the information. You don't need to basically go to the user land in that case. Sorry, what, what uh, I mean is. Uh, oh, you mean I, the policy? Policy on the guest side. Right. Like if you like, if you had if you had the PV sked driver. Let's say that it's something like the PV BPF driver, where its its job was to set up a communication channel between a host BPF program and a guest BPF program. Then all the UAPI that you would need was just the the infrastructure to set up that communication channel, and mm -hmm. the actual paravert policy could just take place entirely over a BPF communication channel, right? So you don't need like if you did I like an I/O paravert, you do like networking, whatever you want to do, it would only ever use the the um, BP, uh, PV BPF driver, and then you wouldn't have to have like anything specific to the scheduler. That's that's a great idea. Yeah, I haven't thought about the UAPI side of it. You are really uh, right. Let me take a note on that. So just just a thought. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 makes sense actually. Okay, perfect. Thanks, thanks for the input. Sure. No, I mean just a thought. I would definitely be curious to see the rest of of the uh, V three design though. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so, so it's it's still like we are deciding. So, uh, like we are we are just going through uh, how how we can implement this, and uh, we, there is no real implementation yet. So, before that, I I thought we will discuss it here and get more inputs. Thank you. Um, yeah. So. So now, uh, now, yeah, now I want to go through three uh, individual details of this um, KVM. So the first thing is KVM callbacks on the host side. Um, so there are two ways in the, in the V2. How we did was basically using struct ops, um, and but uh, the struct op needs to have uh, some uh, boilerplate code uh, to to set up everything. Uh, but in V3, uh, we are thinking about trace points. Can we use trace points? Uh, and if if it's better than struct ops to have just trace points or so that the KVM can expose the trace points. So what we need is basically some events like VM enter, VM exit, interrupt in injection, when the VCPU halts. These are the places where the scheduling decisions for the VCPU has to be made. So uh, do you feel like structures would be an overkill and we can just use trace points in that case? Is the idea that you would call like a, you would call a K-Funk from a trace point that was on the VM exit path? So the idea is like the, we will have an internal trace point in the KVM during VM enter and VM exit. And then the BPF program will register for that. Uh, so there, so, so the, the callback will be implemented in the BP program, and so, then the BP program will have KFUNC to call to the scheduler. Okay. Yeah, the answer is yes, I think. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. So basically, uh, if you need to, could you use the existing, you don't need to add new trace points because there is a VM exit, VM enter trace point now. Um, so we would, those trace points come a bit later after the, uh, after the preemption is enabled. So we would like, like when we were testing it in the V1, like we would like to get as soon as the exit happens, which is before the preemption is enabled. So that's why we thought, and we would need some additional trace points like on an interrupt injection and uh, uh, on the halt path. So, so that's why we thought for VM enter and VM exit, we will have it inside the preemption disabled as an internal trace point, if that makes sense. Yeah, this so was it, very that, I wonder if we can move them, but that's a discussion with the KVM folks. Okay, okay, cool, yeah, that's true. I, I think another thing to consider is that like the advantage of doing this is that you don't have to write a new policy, right? You can basically hook into like the SCED, set scheduler, like the set SCED prior or whatever function. Exactly. So you're using fair.c semantics, um, but then you're, I don't know if I would say that it's like a kind of abstraction breaking. Yeah, I guess that's mm -hmm. the point, right? Like you're basically just using BPF to call into the scheduler directly from KVM without having KVM do it itself. Exactly, yeah. The, yeah, the very first implementation was everything was in the KVM, and that's what the KVM folks didn't like. So it's just like yeah, taking the policy outside of KVM using a BPF program. Hey, you should go on. Uh, continue. Okay. Um, the second thing is uh, so currently we don't have a kernel counterpart. Uh, when the when the VMM receives the guest frame, uh, like the guest virtual address, or sorry, the guest physical address, um, so it directly goes to the VMM through the device uh, through the KVM it directly goes to the VMM, and then VMM passes this to BPF program. So BPF gets a guest pay, guest physical address or a guest frame number. Um, do we? Uh, so either we need to have a KFunk uh, to actually convert this to a like we need to have a kernel mapping for this address. Previously in the first in the first implementation, what we did was KVM had a helper to have uh, a, a virtual ma a mapping inside the kernel uh, ho host kernel. But for BPF, do we have anything similar that we could use or? I, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I have thought, I don't want to derail and go back to the, the guest BPF, host BPF discussion before you have, you've had a chance to finish, but as like a preview for something I want to mention later, if you did mm -hmm. set it up that way, then you could potentially have like a new BPF map type that was actually a guest to host mapping. So you don't even have to worry about PFNs, GFNs, or anything like that. You would just have a shared mapping and you could treat it like anything else and that might be a lot simpler too. Okay. Or you could maybe even do that without the guest BPF program, but that's probably what I would do. Like not worry about frame, like page numbers or anything, just have like a pointer and have a map type that, that handles handles that for you. So you mean like, is there currently a, a setup where the guest can pass a, like guest can talk to a BPF program in the host and pass a map? Like, no, that, I, I didn't have that. no, 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 that, it, it doesn't exist yet. This would have to be a new map type. Oh, um, okay. There's, I don't think there's oh. any integration with KVM and VPF at all yet, is my understanding. But I think, that's like a huge potential area for a lot of gains. Like if, if so, and, and I guess again, to talk about the sort of guest program and host program, like if, v, if the VMM's job is basically to set up a mapping from guest in whatever context, BPF or whatever, to host, and like the, it's essentially a map type where the host has, has like a mapping in the guest set up by KVM, that's the opaque communication channel, then I think that's like a pretty extensible, like abstract way to enable any kind of paravert, right? Um, yeah. But it would require KVM work to do that. This sounds like a good topic for plumbers. I'm already doing exactly. a microconference, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah, we can talk about that later. <laughs> exactly, and that's also a great idea. Like, I haven't thought about that. If, if, we, if we can extend the maps to actually have guest to host talks, yeah, that's another thing we, I'll, I'll explore. Thanks for that. And the last part is, uh, I think Sketex already has this thing. So I was looking at the Sketex code uh, to see the hooks. So basically, we would like we would like to uh, have a couple of uh, uh, 
uh, scheduler functions exported for placement and priority manipulation. And uh, KFUNG is the best option here, I think. So that's what we are looking into. Uh, just expose the functions that we need and the PPA program can call into that. So yeah, yeah. you'd probably want to have the KFUNC like I imagine that you would only want to allow this to be called from a vCPU probably. I don't think you'd want to be able to like set priority from any trace point. So you would probably have the KFUNC, like set a per CPU variable by KVM and then do what I was talking about in the last presentation where you check that in the KFUNC and then if it's, if it's valid then you call into the uh, sched set scheduler. Yeah, yeah there's some okay. trace points, trace events that could deadlock if you try to call into sched, sched, uh, sched scheduler. So yeah, you want to make sure that the trace points that you can do this to has to be kind of like allow list. Yeah, exactly. So the so the allow list is okay. The allow list has to happen inside the BPA program to make sure that this particular uh, KFUNG is only being called from this trace point, right? So what I would do is like wherever you would emit the trace event, um, mm -hmm. you would have you would set a per CPU variable that says like vcpu trace event whatever and then uh by default it would be unset and then in the kfunk implementation you would check to see if that's set and then if so you're like okay i know that i'm being called from the context where this is actually safe you imp then you call into sed sched set scheduler otherwise you like you you just reject it or you, re you return or something like that yeah okay does the verifier okay. would the verifier be able to check something like this or uh, not yet no uh, I, the verifier only associates the ability to call a KFUNC from the program type right now. So you would have, you'd, be, you'd say this can be called from any trace point, and then it actually can't be called from any trace point. It can be called from this one exact trace point. So you have to do this, this dance of setting the per CPU variable to like. Okay. I mean, that'd be within the kernel, so nothing could ever set. Basically, is the protection in those, so this variable that gets set, mm -hmm. that's from the kernel, the kernel does it? I mean. Yeah, so before, in the kernel, before you emit the trace point event, you would set this per CPU variable, and then in the KFUNC implementation, you would check it. So it's basically okay. just a way to connect the, the two around the, the BPF program. Okay, it just still seems very ad hoc a little bit, and a I didn't dangerous. say it was good, I said it was Yeah, yeah I, do, I definitely yeah. want something a little bit more. Um, I mean, we could even hook into the uh, tracing, have like a flag into like a trace yeah. point. I think say, yeah. yeah, that these things are allowed, like certain functions that may be allowed within certain trace points that's done with the trace infrastructure that Yeah, should. I think so, that would work. I, I mean, if, if, actually I think for what I was talking about before, like in general we need more granularity for how and when KFUNC should be invoked, yeah. depending not just on program type, but context. Because this you is just another example. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, you have to, you have to like, you have to be careful. Um, it's program type granularity is fine for like, these really core KFUNCs, like the task acquire, task release, but for anything context specific, it doesn't work. You have to be really careful, yeah. Okay, so we'll probably add it to like the define trace point. We could probably put types type in there that make sure that, I don't know. Yeah, you could, but you want, but this should, we probably, this needs to be, I think, a generic BPF thing, right? Because it's not specific to trace points, like struct ops programs have the same requirements and whatnot as well. So, mm. um, yeah, I, I mean, we could talk about it more, but I think this is a bigger, this is a bigger problem than just trace points. Yeah, well, I was thinking not just this KFUNC, but other KFUNCs. Like, you probably want more information, not just for this. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because, oh, real quick, I think there's, um, once you have a KFUNC to change priority, I think there's probably going to be more use cases besides KVM to do it. If it yeah, you could. I mean, I think we would have to see what the scheduler folks think about that because, um, I mean, it's, this is at least high enough granularity that like user space can call it through a system call essentially. So it's probably okay to call this from multiple contexts. Um, but once you start letting, like, I think they'd probably be um, redis like hesitant to let BPF programs start setting scheduler knobs. Mm -hmm. This is a high enough level one or maybe they'd be fine with it, but, but yeah, I agree with you that there's yeah. gonna be, they're gonna grow more cases where people wanna boost themselves because they're like in the critical path, Amdahl's law, whatever, you, yeah, might have you. Or does he scat X? Okay. Great. Uh, yeah, these were the points that I wanted to discuss, and uh, uh, I got a set of very valuable inputs, and uh, we'll work on it, and probably during LPC, we'll have a implementation talk about this. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for all the valuable inputs. Do we want to go back to talking about the mapping between guest and host? Yeah, I mean, I think, so I, I actually don't know whether you would even need that to be like guest program to host program. Like, 
you might be able to you might be able to have it be guest VM to host BPF program and v, the the VMM's job at the end of the day the guest the 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 host BPF program just wants a mapping right I think if you did it I think if you did it as a guest program it's it's better because you don't have to have anything hard coded into the UAPI and the and the guest like whatever scheduling policy you want to implement you can just do it right like like the the communication channel is purely opaque. Um, but I think that for the for like the opaque channel, I don't think it necessarily would have to be host to guest. But it would have to be, if you didn't do it that way, you would have UAPI for the paravert policy, which I think is going to constrain us probably in ways that we don't anticipate quite yet. And I think Sean is probably not going to like that either, if I had to guess. Yeah, you're right. Anything that goes into UAP, I think we'll get a uh, yeah, strong pushback. So I really like the idea of the guest to host uh, map. Um, It'll be more implementation details to see how we can envision that. Yeah, and but then you I, know, <laughs> you you also have the problem of like needing to support BPF in the guests, depending on what you're doing, if it's like Android or whatnot. But I think that's, I think the longer term, that's going to be the way le the way, least painful, and certainly I think for the KVM people, the least, the easiest for them to stomach, because um, all paravert policies, whatever, all can use that right going forward and. Um, the less UAPI, the better for maintainers. Exactly, yeah. And and that will make even the VMM side also a little bit easier uh, because now everything is uh, uh, the VMM only needs to uh, transfer the vCPU PIDs and the CPU IDs, and then yeah, we have everything set up directly between guest and the host. So yep. that makes things more easier. Yeah. And then you can use this from your trace point before without any SCEDEX stuff, and then we can also use it from SCEDEX to do all sorts of whatever wild stuff we want to. So every, I think everybody, every use case would, would fit into this model, I think. Yeah, that's true. Anything else, everyone? Thanks, Vineeth. Yeah, thanks, thank Vineeth. Thanks, yeah, bye.